to show you how to tie this bonefish pattern. It's called a Peterson spawning shrimp. It's got a lot of um, materials that have to go into this back part of the shrimp. To start with, it's called this Peterson spawning shrimp because it's got this little egg sac on it. Um, I use egg yarn for that. Then we've got some antron in here, some tan antron. We've got some pearl crystal flash, some black crystal flash for the antenna. We have some medium um, round cream rub rubber legs. Um, and we have these mono eyes. I make my own, own mono eyes. It's very simple to do. The body of this has got flat braid. It's got to be flat. The um, diamond braid just doesn't give as nice of a body. And then we have some tan rabbit fur up here and some medium bead chain eyes. Um, the thread I'm going to use is this Danville Flymaster. It's 210 denier. You could use 140 as well. I'm going to tie this on a Tiemco 811S in a size 6 today. Kind of a this cat, this flight takes a little bit of time to tie. Um, hopefully we can crank through it here. So I'm going to start my thread about a hook eyes length back. Make a little bump. I'm going to take my medium B chains, mount them right up here with a couple of X wraps. I'm going to put a, a good number of those on front of you that have tied clousers or things like that you know you want to do this and then you want to take your thread and essentially like you're wrapping a parachute post really set those beads bead chain eyes on there with a good bit of torque once we have those eyes set I always just check them and we're gonna take our thread back to the back of the hook, right above the barb. Now this egg yarn that I'm using is a, it's Alaskan row color. What I like to do is take it, tie it in right here, take a couple of wraps towards my bead chain eyes, and then fold this back over. It's a really secure tie-in. Um, and then we'll clip this pretty short and then I come in here with my fingernails and I sort of fray it a little bit. I like that really um, sharp edge that I get with my scissors when I cut egg yarn. So there we go, that's that. Um, then we're going to take some tan antron and we're going to tie this in maybe a hook and a half shank in length off the bend of the hook right over top of our egg yarn. Take a couple securing wraps and I'm going to tie this forward in an effort to keep, we got a lot of stuff to tie in here and I don't want to create a lot of bumps um, and big jumps with, with this thread. And by that what I mean is I don't want to have to, see I got a little lump right here and I'm going to attempt to sort of fill that in with my next few materials. The next thing we're going to tie in is some crystal flash, some pearl crystal flash. You can use four strands. I like this to be a little bit longer than my antron. Just a little bit, so tie it in right on top of it. A couple of wraps. Wrap back over the remainder of those. Turn that thread forward again. And then I'm going to take my black pearl crystal flash and all I do is I take one strand of this fold it in half and I cut it and I leave it really long I had really long antennas on this fly um, the original one that I saw had really long antennas and that's how I tied them and fish them and very effective so no need to change it so tie those in right on top kind of here at the end I'll pull one a little bit towards one side and one a little bit towards the other side give them a split there Leave those hanging off the back. Now I'll take my monofilament eyes that I've made. And when I make these, the monofilament sort of has a uh, curve to it, how it was mounted on that spool. And I'm going to do it when I mount these eyes in here so that they're facing away from each other. So I'll tie one on the far side of the hook. A few wraps. I'm going to get back to about there. 
I will take the other one, mount it on this side of the hook, match the distance off of the bend with the eye so they're the same. And I've got these guys, you can work with them a little bit, get them where you want them before you really put some torque on your thread and tie them in. But you can see I've left that monofilament off the front a little long because what I want to do is clip it where I clip it right behind the eyes. Trim this out a little bit of an angle. Trim this one the same. I've got them where I want them. So then I just bring my thread forward, building a pretty nice clean underbody there. I like this thread, it lays pretty flat. If it starts to round out, I just spin it counterclockwise and it flattens out really nicely for me. So once I've got that all covered up neatly, I'm going to take my round rubber. I'm going to take two in time on um, the far side of the hook and two on this side of the hook. I just leave them long to start. So just hold them over here. Take a thread wrap. Catch it in. Position it where I want it. And I sort of like these coming off uh, essentially what will be the bottom of the hook because the fly is going to ride like this. Um, a little bit angle that way. Take a few wraps towards the bead chain eye, towards the eye of the hook. I'm going to take the rubber legs and put them on this side of the hook, that side towards me, and wind back towards the bend. Keep my rubber legs where I want them to go. And then what I'm going to do is come in here trim these out. Well, these will stretch a little bit as I wind toward my bead chain eyes. So I want to account for that. Should get them right about there. That's good. Now what I'm going to do is take my thread and do the same thing I did after my eyes are tied in. I'm going to just going to clean this up just a little bit, make sure everything's nice and smooth. Then we'll mount our pearl braid, flat pearl braid in here. Tie that in, work my thread forward, and we'll start to wind this braid. And as I wind this braid, I always flip my fly over, make sure that I'm covering everything up so there's no just thread, bare thread back there. Wind this forward in touching turns for about half of the body length from the, the bee chain eye to the back of the hook. When I get about there, I'm going to lift my braid forward a couple wraps towards the bead chain to set this. I want it going forward because essentially this is going to function very similar to like a wing case on a nymph when we're done. Fold this back and this way I get it dead center how I want it. Clean this all up with some thread. Now we're going to tie the rest of the fly with it upside down. And we'll take three or four separate um, different clumps of tan rabbit. I say three or four because it really does depend on the size of the clumps you're using and the size of the hook. Um, but we want them to just cover the tips of the um, fibers to just come a little bit past the, um, the point of the hook. One, one thing you can do is just moisten the very tips of these rabbit fibers just a little bit and it might make it a little bit easier. What I try and do is when I tie them in, I try and get them the length I want them and so that I don't have a ton of excess, I do a soft wrap and then I sort of pull the fibers as much as I can and this Danville will lay, bind that down really nice and I advance my thread forward. I'm going to tie the next clump in right there. I'm going to try and make these cl clumps all about the same size in length and in um, the amount of material I'm using. Come in here, 
a wrap. So when I'm, I'm when I'm tying these flies, I'm really putting a lot of pressure on this. This is why I use that 210. I'm really cranking down on the the thread there, so I don't want this to fall apart. Wet the ends of that material so it's a little bit easier to work with. Tie it in right here. Draw it back a little so there's not a lot of waste. There we go. It's tied in really well. Turn the fly back over. We'll take that pearl, pull it straight over top. A couple of wraps. I wrap back towards the bee chain eyes. Pull this up, trim it out with the tips of my scissors so it's a nice clean cut. Build up a little head here. That's nice and neat. Then we'll take our whip finisher. We'll just whip finish the fly off. Now we're definitely going to want to put some sort of um, head cement on here. You can use epoxy if you want to. I've been using this Loon hard head. It's a clear, non-toxic finish. Um, Take your rubber legs. Last thing to do is split them. I don't, I don't usually split my rubber legs up. I leave them how they come um, stuck together. They're just a little easier to work with. One less thing flopping around. Um, and when I'm done, I'll separate them. There's a couple more things you could do to the fly. You could take it, take a marker, put some barring on here if you'd like to. Um, I fish them just like this, and they fish just fine. Um, the pattern rides like this. L looks awesome in the water and the bonefish really seem to like it. Um, so tie a few of them up if you're headed to the flats and uh, give them a try.